You are listening to Worshipology with Curtis Parks, a biblical, practical, and spiritual conversation about living and leading worship. Let's lean into today's episode. Well, hey, thanks so much for listening to Worshipology. This is a podcast for worship teams, worship leaders, worshipers of Jesus. And uh, listen, today I have Birch Paul up in the house. And uh, Birch and I, we've known each other for how long now? It's probably like close to 10 years. Close to 10 years, man. Yep. And uh, Birch is a worship pastor with LifePoint Church. And uh, we just had a very fattening lunch yes, at an we Italian did. restaurant. So this may go a little slower <laughs> pace than usual, but uh, man, Birch, just for the listeners, uh, why don't you kind of tell a little bit of your story? How'd you get involved in worship and music and ministry, man? Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, my name is Birch and um, I'm the husband of an amazing wife named Lauren and the father of three amazing boys. Love it. Jeremiah, Zion, and Levi. They're amazing young men. And, uh, <laughs> Strong names. Yeah, man. And I'm, I'm, I'm proud to say they all have placed their faith in Jesus. So Let's go. If, if I take them out one day, then at least I know <laughs> they're going to go to heaven because <laughs> they can drive me crazy a little bit sometimes. <laughs> but no, nah, they're, they're great boys, and I, I got a great family and very blessed. But yeah, I've been mm-hmm. a part uh, of a, a local church ministry called Life Point. For going on 12 years this Amazing. coming fall. Wow. And um, Life Point somehow found me in Miami, Florida. Yeah. Uh, through uh, the combination of friendships and connections and, and my roommate at the time. And um, I came to be a part of the team uh, back bef- before my first son was even born. And, uh, you know, left everything that I knew in Miami, Florida. I mean, left you know, warm weather, left community, left family, uh, uh, left all <laughs> kinds of things. And I came to Spotsylvania, Virginia. I yes. <laughs> didn't know that place even existed, uh-huh, and, uh-huh. but uh, came to find that Spotsylvania was an amazing place. Wow. An amazing home for my family and I to to be able to reach the city, to reach the county, um, to raise a family. Wow. And um, I've been serving underneath uh, the leadership of our senior pastor, um, for th- all this time. And, you know, God has been amazing. You know, we've, um, I've pri- primarily led worship, uh, but have been involved in almost every other area of the church from a leadership standpoint. Uh, but um, I'm now in the Richmond area, being a part of one of our newer campuses, Wow! building the campus, building the worship team, building the culture, helping to uh, help bring the, the, the ethos and the vibe of our church yeah. to a campus that's about an hour away from where it planted and launched. Wow. Now, how many campuses total is LifePoint Church? LifePoint has five campuses. Wow. We're in uh, Culpeper, Virginia, mm-hmm. f- uh, Fredericksburg, Stafford, Spotsylvania, and also down here in Richmond. That's amazing. Yeah. So we actually, we had a, a, a podcast probably about a month ago with a worship pastor that was based out of uh, the Tulsa area. And Battle Creek, I think eight campuses. And one of the things that we were talking about was like, you know, when you kind of take the DNA of like a mother campus to other places, yeah. what is it like to um, take the culture to a different area, to a different town, yeah. maybe a different state even? Uh, yeah. What's the challenges in that when it comes to the worship life? Like, are you guys doing the same set list at all the campuses or is it just kind of like collaborative? Yeah. What does that look like, Birch? Yeah, yeah, you know, and it's it's interesting you asked that too because every every uh church uh expansion model has its own degree of difference right. even if they're attempting to do it based upon a a model that they're following. Yeah. Everybody's going to do it just a little bit different and I think you got to find out what is the best for you. Mm-hmm. But for us, you know, there there's lots of challenges to keeping it feeling like the same church. I think inevitably you're going to end up having uh, campuses that have a little bit of their own feel, a little bit of their own flavor, if you will. Yeah. But the the best thing that you could possibly do is to allow the the geographical identity to live, but the vision and mission identity to remain the same. That's really good. And so, I mean, one of the things that I know that we face as a challenge is that, you know, Richmond being a much more of a city than it is compared to Fredericksburg, right? you know, there, there's kind of this uh, desire or this, um, um, this innate thing in us that wants to pull towards certain city mission, you know, like, mm. um, ev- you know, diving, diving into areas where the city is already in. And while that's important and, and noble, and it's absolutely what we should do, what we don't want to do is to veer away too far from what 
the uh, the type of local church ministry that we that we're that we've always been. Yeah, yeah. Um, if if anything, we want to we want to bring who we are to this community because who we've been so far has bared fruit. Right. It's right. not that the brand is most important, and it's not that the name is most important. It's that the the fruit. That's so good. The fruit actually rep- shows us that it's worth replicating. Wow. The fruit being. Thousands of people placing their faith in, in, in faith, faith in Jesus, yeah. hundreds upon hundreds of people getting baptized every year. Yeah, you know, yeah. And so that you know, having a a real intent for us, it's having a real intentionality on presenting the gospel clearly, having worship environments that call towards the lost, but also make sure the found is seen and known and wow. ministered to, um, and um, really empowering people to do every work of the ministry. Wow. Uh, that's kind of the big part of who we are as a church, and we've tried to make sure we replicate that everywhere else, even though it, we can feel the temptation to do things a little bit differently because we're in a different place. And yeah. so I think you got to really make sure you dial those things in as as best you can. That's really cool. So, you know, as I heard you mention the five different locations that you guys are in right now, it kind of seems like you got a little bit of city, you got a little bit of suburbs, you got a little bit of even rural maybe. Yeah. What have you noticed as kind of the main differential points as you bring who you are to those different, not just places, but styles of life, like the sure. different lifestyle that you have, whether, whether it's rural, suburban, or urban, being sure. in the Richmond area? What does yeah. that look like, man? Yeah, I, th- I think it's important, maybe not as supremely important, but I do think it is important that in leadership, uh, the people of the community can see themselves. Wow. That there's a certain um, demographic that is you know, predominant in that area that it would be represented in leadership at the church. Maybe it's the campus pastor. Maybe it's a worship leader. Maybe, maybe it's um, a coordinator who's on the volunteer dream team who is um, very much involved with the leadership of the, of the campus. Yeah. When, when a person from that community comes into the church and sees themselves represented, they immediately feel like they can be a part of that community. Wow. You know, the, I, I think it's beautiful for people to parachute into certain communities, and it's noble, and it's, I mean, I mean, it is the Great Commission to go into all the earth. Yep. You know, um, but I think as quickly as you possibly can, you need to find trusted people. Mm. who can carry the weight of ministry that really look like the community you're in. So if you're in a community where there's a lot of boomers avail- you know, around living there, you've got to have some boomers who you trust yep. that uh, – can be a part of leadership. If wow. you if you're in a community where it's you know it's Latino or it's it's you know a lot of you know West African people, like I, I don't see I don't find any uh, I don't have any objection with a person finding trusted individuals, and I think the the key is trusted mm. trusted individuals to be placed in leadership that represent the community that they're in. That's so good, um, and I, I think that's definitely one thing because th- there's a certain amount of uh, of trust that gets um, extended towards the church. If I know that this church is not just Starbucks dropping in here trying to monopolize the uh, the the ecosystem, if you will, mm-hmm. it's like it's actually mm-hmm. people who are from here. That's really good. Who live here? Who want to be here? Who their kids are in the school? They they shop at the at the grocery store, yep. the same grocery store as me. It's like I can see that you're part of the community, and there's there's some trust that I extend towards you if I see that you're living here and you're part of this community. Yeah, that's amazing. So when you're looking for, I mean, obviously as a worship pastor, one of the things that you're geared in is making that worship experience powerful, special, authentic to that community. Sure. When you're a part of uh, a multi-site church and worship pastor, uh, how do you find people? I mean, that's like one of the things that we were even talking about at lunch. I mean, yeah. we just moved up here eight months ago. And, uh, you know, this isn't Nashville, this isn't D.C., where my last two homes were. Yeah. Um, you know, so one of the things that's the challenge, I think, that we've been uh, just wrestling with is, like, how do you find uh, great quality musicians and how do you raise great quality? I mean, talk about that because you said something yeah. really key at lunch. Sometimes you got to make the goal. Talk yeah, about that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm uh, you know, so I, I've been a part of my church now going on for, you know, about 12 years. And when I, when I first came to my church, we were in a extreme building phase where, you know, we needed to uh, match the growth of the church on some of those volunteer teams. Yeah. And I've always told people this, like no disrespect to any other volunteer in a different part of the church, but finding one drummer is like finding 20 greeters, <laughs> it, you know, and if you're a worship leader, you know what I'm talking about there. 
they really are gold. And so what we were talking about is there's often times where you feel like you've got to you got to mine the area for gold. But if you're anything like me, sometimes you feel like you can, to use another expression, you feel like you could have fished the pond dry a little bit. Mm. It's like, I don't think I can put up another Facebook ad. I don't think I can throw out um, another, you know, wanted poster. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I could show up to another local show, you know, handing out my business card. Yeah. I feel like, especially inside of my church, I've said enough announcements. I've put it on Instagram enough time. I feel like I've kind of fished upon dry. People know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? People, People know, know yeah. that there's a need and I'm looking for, for, for players. Um, eventually, I've got to start I've got to not only look for people who are ready to go, the people who are like, they're trained up, they, they're they ready day one. I've got to begin to start building my farm team, if you will. Wow. You know, I've got to start looking at that 17-year-old yep. who might not be quite ready yet, but you know what? If I if I get some gear that they can use, if, if I, um, you know, allot some time in my week, if I make myself available, if I invest in some resources, you know, then I could put that in that person's hand. And maybe in eight to 12 months from now, they might be extremely ready to go. They yeah. might be, they might be so ready to contribute that it'll blow you away. There's a, there's a young man in our church named Josiah. That's, this is an incredible story. Um, a name Jedediah that one of our campus uh, worship leaders is developing. And about one year ago, he struggled on his audition on acoustic guitar, mm -hmm. struggled. Mm -hmm. And um, up to now, just only about a month ago, he led, he led worship on lead guitar at one of our like midweek events. And I mean, the kid is shredding. <laughs> That's he's, awesome. he's absolutely shredding. Yeah, yeah. And he's 16 years old. And he, um, he actually Amazing. led worship down here in Richmond at my um, at, at one of our nights of worship. And, you know, everything from his dad has to drop him off and I have to text his mom to let him know what time <laughs> rehearsal is. And all these things that you would, you, you would see to be drawbacks of a yeah. young person. But he steps onto that platform with so much confidence because he's been trained. Wow. One of our worship leaders has been so faithful to him, mm. showing up and meeting with him every single week, making time in his life yeah. to invest in him. And he truly is an example of, of building the gold. Wow. Where Whereas we were hoping to find somebody who's like, you know, maybe 31, you know, can get around on their own, have a little bit of disposable income to mm -hmm. buy some guitars and mm -hmm. pedal boards. We found somebody who wasn't ready, but they were available. Wow. And so I think if you've got the patience that you can uh that maybe you can chew on a little bit of mediocrity but not grow a taste for it wow you can actually discover that you can build up some great stuff it's so good but you got to stick around for a while so Our what are some of the like maybe safety zones where you can develop somebody that's in that you yep. know uh, one of the um stories that we actually just celebrated this last weekend was there was a 13 year old kid playing drums in one of our services Huge. now when he was three years old uh, as Pastor Brian, our, our pastor here at Destination, was telling the story, uh, at three years old, he came and would just plant himself in front of the drum set and just look in awe at the drummer. And uh, his older brother played, so like when he was five, he got his hands on some sticks, and now he's 13. Yep. He's been playing in our youth, and uh, for the first time ever yesterday, he played on a Sunday morning Amazing. and just crushed it. I mean, it was great. Amazing. You know, and He's still in that development phase, but I think it's just so cool when you can have those stories where you just know, like, man, that makes that kid's life. I mean, like, that just made his whole year. That just made, And giving them an opportunity to be a part of something sure. when they're not ready. So w how do you find those, like, areas where it's like, hey, this is maybe a little bit safer for you yeah. to develop your gift in? Yeah, yeah. I, de definitely the, the key will be a safe space, you know? Yeah. I think you got to have um, – every church is going to – I think either intentionally or just by proxy create an environment that is safe to fail forward. Mm. It's like I can put you in this position and it means something. You know, it's it's a real environment. There's people actually here to that want to be led in worship. Yeah. But the uh if you if you mess up, the uh the fall is not that not that high, if mm -hmm. you know what I mean. It's mm -hmm. you know, if if I'm training a communicator, like I want to teach somebody how to preach the gospel, the the first Sunday preaching should not be Easter Sunday, <laughs> because there, there's just yeah. the, the stakes are too high. Right, right. Uh, the um the opportunity the the for the 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 margin error is too great. You know all those things. But maybe if I say, hey, why don't you open up small group in prayer? 
Yep. That's a that's a really safe space mm. to begin their communication uh, development, you know. Um, and I would say it's it's very similar for worship leaders. You know, I've I've had worship leaders and musicians um, be a part of things like small groups leading worship in them. Yeah. Because you know what? If it didn't work out for one or two songs, I've always I've always got Spotify on deck. You there know you what go. I'm saying? Yeah. I can yeah. always throw a video on YouTube. You know, yep. I can always just give them one shot, you know, give that guy or that girl with an acoustic guitar and and their little voices, give them a shot. You know, <laughs> I think those are great. I think, but you know, it's a real environment where they can really lead somebody. Yeah. But it's not like Sunday morning on your highest attended you know, Sunday of the year, you know, things like that, you know, obviously, um, er different areas like our, your, your children's area, kids are way more forgiving for the lack of expertise and excellence yeah. than an adult might be who's bringing their coworker for the first time ever to church. Yeah. And, you know, Johnny's up there bombing, you know what I'm saying? Right. right. So, <laughs> um, but you know, you, you, you go in the kids area, throw on some tracks, you can start to develop your stage presence you can develop your ability to harmonize and you've got the safety net of a fully produced track yep. being played from your you know your computer graphics computer and whatever that looks like you know and they're able to sing along and really sing don't just lip sync yeah like actually sing learn yeah. the song memorize it you know get accustomed to transitions and you know setting the song up and and helping people respond to God and worship throughout the course of the song wow. and without all the pressure of leading a whole band that's a great way for a worship leader to get some really quality reps that's really good man well I got to shift gears here okay. when you told me that you had been at life point for 12 years i just think that's such a powerful thing right now because i just see you know, it's kind of like I was having a conversation last week with uh, with somebody just about my favorite baseball team is the Washington Nationals. OK. okay. And we just both agreed like right now you're really just cheering for the uniforms. Yeah. <laughs> like like your favorite player is gone within yeah. six months now. Yeah. Like there's yeah. not this like loyalty to a team that there was when I was growing. I mean, man, I just remember Ken Griffey Jr. was with the Mariners. Like Absolutely. that's what it, Frank Thomas was with yeah. the White Sox. That yeah. was his only yeah. team the entire time. Oh, yeah. And I think sometimes like even in ministry, like we've just seen and, and not for, you know, it's just a different culture. I think we live in today where sure. it's like the whole world is a lot more accessible. It's not that big of a uh, uh, you know, crazy thought to think that somebody could be living in Washington state and then Washington DC, yeah. you know? And so I think the world has become a smaller place. And sure. with that, people have been more open to just going different places, but you've been there for 12 years. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, you know, we were talking a little bit about this at lunch. You've, you've seen this church grow. Mm -hmm. um, the stories are incredible. You've served alongside worship leaders that are amazing. I mean, Jordan yeah. call, we were talking about him, yeah. Brandon Lake. I know yeah. like yeah. I got to meet all you guys when you did one of your live records, yeah. just serving with some incredible worship leaders. And, and you have been somebody that, I mean, I've just admired from, from the distance, kind of like Ryan Williams at river Valley, yeah. just kind of seeing um, your heart just be so rooted in the local church yeah. and getting to share in all these stories. Yeah, what man. is it? Uh, that keeps you so in love with the local church and that you've yeah. been with LifePoint for this long, man. Yeah, you know, um, I'm, yeah, it's, it has been a while. And when I say it's been a while, like, there's people that I'm leading worship with now that when I, like, there's, like, for instance, there's one guy that's actually one of our worship leaders. First, and I thought he he's an amazing singer, amazing <laughs> worship leader. And I met him, like, t a summer ago. And so the first time I led worship with him, I said, hey, dude, you're awesome, man. I, I've been so excited to watch you lead worship, and um, and now I get a chance to lead with you. Dude, I'm, I'm so pumped, you know, all this stuff, right? And he's like, man, I'm, you're excited. I'm, I'm excited to lead worship with you. I've been watching you lead worship since I was in the sixth grade. Wow. And, and I was like... Like how old are you now? <laughs> like, are you are you oh, are you like out of high school yet? Yeah, that's both inspiring you, you and know, depressing. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, man, I feel old really quick. <laughs> but you know, the cool thing about that is too is that you you know you will feel old eventually, but you also will realize no one will be able to tell you that if you don't stick around somewhere for a long wow. time. Wow. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You'll you'll um, there's so many. Uh, adults and, and people that I know right now that I'm either helping them take their steps into ministry or watching them from a distance that I knew when they were 10 years old mm. that I that I was I was a part of their life and a part of their spiritual maturation and I get to be a part of their story 
because I stuck around. And, wow. and also to the glory, to the glory of God, not just because of my longevity, but all praise be to God. You know, um, I've been able to stay in one place. Um, I've been able to been been loyal to a church, faithful to one wife. And um, I've been able to see all these things, you know, yeah, stories yeah. really do um, in, in, embolden you and strengthen you. Like we were talking about this over lunch, like hearing these stories makes you want to just stick around for more. Yeah. You know, makes, yeah. you, makes you want to see. And, 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 and on top of that, being committed to the local church, like I'm a true converted Christian. Mm. Like I didn't, I didn't grow up in church. I didn't really have a, um, a Christian background. Like I came to, to faith in Christ radically. Wow. I was co- headed in a completely different direction. The first time I came to church, to, came to church, it was cause I was looking to meet a girl. <laughs> I was look, she told me that if you come to my church, we can go, we can go on a date afterwards. And I was like, bet I'm coming. <laughs> and I showed up to the church and I smelled like smoke yeah. and I stumbled into this place and instead of being met with condemnation and judgment, I was met with arms open in love. Wow. And I was genuinely converted to Christ. Mm. And so um, that genuine conversion um, coming by way of the local church, it grafted me into something that it's very difficult for me to find a way out of. Wow. You know, even if that's, um, you know, maybe I'll, I'll do some other things on the side or I'll have some, um, independent business ventures or, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, I, I can say without, um, without, you know, exaggerating the fact that even if I, um, came off of full-time vocational ministry, I would still be as involved as possible in a local church. Wow. Cause I believe in it that much. I, I believe in the, 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 the power of the local ecclesia. Mm. I believe in the the being the representation of of the the bride of Christ and wow. in a community and what a strong church can mean for a community. And so having having the opportunity to be part of all these stories and be a part of all of these lives being changed, it it's I just feel so connected that um it's beyond just a feeling thing. It's a it's a commitment. It's a yeah. it's it's kind of similar. It's akin to the way that I've committed to my wife. Yeah. You know, whether it's high or low, because I've had plenty of highs and plenty of lows yeah. with my church. Mm. And um I am committed to building up the kingdom of God through the local church. And, mm. you know, I, I do pray that it's for the long haul at this current church, but whether it's at this current church or another, I'm just, I just believe in the local church and I'm thankful to be a part of it. That's so cool, man. And the cool thing about your church, and we were just talking about this, some of the just incredible things that you guys have witnessed over the years, thousands of salvations, all of the baptisms, you guys are definitely a church that is geared towards reaching mm-hmm. the lost and helping people find the same story that you found as you were converted to Christ in the local church. And so talk to me a little bit about as you lead worship in that environment, as you guys write and release projects. I mean, you guys are always writing, you're always releasing albums, some great stuff. We're actually going to have some of uh, LifePoint's music in our show notes. So you're going to be able to uh, listen to some of that. But as you write and you release music... And you're writing the story, I'm going to imagine from the stories of the house, what does that look like for you guys as a worship team at a church that is geared towards the lost? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think first of all, it's a, it's a, a such an honor to be able to mm. write music and release music as a worship leader at a church. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't believe that it is a necessarily a, a mandate that every church worship leader needs to release music yeah um, because there's so many other things that we we should be a, applying our attention towards mm. but but it's such a gift to be able to it's so awesome yeah like sometimes I sit in these writing rooms that I'm you know in the middle of a camp or we're recording and I just laugh I'm like this is what we do. Yeah. Like this is our job. Yeah. Like this is amazing. Yeah. This is, this is a, it's a blessing. It's a privilege. It's awesome. It's so much fun. And, um, and I'm just always grateful for any time that, you know, God can, God can encounter us in such a unique way that Mm. something comes out of that, that then blesses another person. Wow. And I'll, and, and, and again, I, I don't like to speak in extremes, but I, I do feel this way um, adamantly that even if I didn't release another worship song. 
I never put another song on Spotify, a live video on YouTube. I still believe I would keep every writing appointment I have to this day. Wow. I would keep every single one. I wouldn't yeah. change it. Because even if it's inside of the little church of mine, I've, I mean, just this past Sunday, one of the, the some of the songs that we've written that we are playing, that pe- people are telling us that these songs are meaning something to them. Wow. And if, you know, if, if I was a local church pastor who was just preaching to a group of a couple hundred people, that would be enough. Yep. Right? Yeah. So I've got to be the worship leader that says this has to be enough. Mm. I, I, I can't let my desire to be better and, and excellent and, and go further overshadow and make me look past the people that are in front of me. Mm. And so that's kind of the beauty about being a church worship leader. It's like I've got my I've got my streams right there in the congregation. Wow. I've got I've got my test audience right here in front of me. Mm. And every Sunday I can sh- I can pastor them through the word of God. And, and music, and so um, it's awesome. And so every time we we write songs, the goal is to be able to write a song that that ministers to the found, but also calls to the lost. That's really good. And the only way that you can really do that, that with something that's uh, unique to where you are, is you you got to be connected to where you are. Mm. And you know, um, I'm a I'm a big fan of making things as comfortable as possible for people and you know that encourages creativity and encourages rest but I'm I'm one of those people that that as soon as the service is over on a Sunday morning I'm out there in the foyer you know I'm I'm meeting people I'm learning people's names I'm hearing their stories yeah you know um, I lead a small group of my own mm. um, like um, I've got like 15 men that show up on Friday mornings at six to play basketball wow. and I listen to their stories most of the time. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm getting people putting buckets in my face and, I'm, <laughs> you know, whatever. But the whole reason why I'm doing that is because I want to be able to reach men yeah. and, 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 and encourage men and I'm getting to hear their stories. And so the more you, the more you listen to what people are saying, the mm. more you hear the testimony of, of people in your church, the more you hear the prayer requests Wow. That people are praying for. I mean, there's just there's just content that they're just dropping out there for you. Wow. And not not that I'm doing it in such a way that's uh, um, I, I'm 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 looking to leverage my position for the for what I want to do. It's just right. it's just it just so happens that like people are sharing with me the things that they're praying to God. Mm. And it's like, man, why why sh- we should put that in song? Wow. You know, we should write about that. Th- you know, this 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 story is a testimony of the faithfulness of God. And we need to write about that. Yeah, we we absolutely should, you know, because um, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. That's and it. So, like, why wouldn't we use so many cool stories of so many amazing people to help fuel what we do? And so, um, I also believe that um, for it to reach lost people, it doesn't need to sound like lost people wrote it. Okay, explain that. That's really good. So, like. Um, not from a stylistic sense, not from a sonic sense, but like when it comes to Christian music as a as a whole, I don't think our music needs to sound like the world. I don't think we need to look like the world or behave like the world to be able to reach the world. It's really good. I think the most pure, honest, the beautiful Jesus is what calls people home. Yeah. That's what calls the lost. Yeah. If Jesus be lifted up, then all men will run That's unto it. and find safety. And so if we just show people Jesus... You know, we don't have to like dress them up too much. We won't have to make them sound like Bieber, which, you know, shout out to Bieber. I'm, I, I, I like you, Bieber. No production, though. Yeah, if, if, if you ever want to like hang, I'm here. Um, but like, you know, we, we, we just we just need to show people Jesus. Yeah, that's really good. You know, we don't have to make it confusing or overly uh, uh, creative that it, it starts to confuse the minds of people or it tickles their ears. Mm. We just show people the truth of Jesus wow. and lift him up. And I'm telling you, that kind of stuff is going to reach the lost. That's, that's going so to good. That, that's going to show people who they need, which is is Jesus. Wow. So anybody listening right now, you're wondering what's uh, what's your next topic of song choice, man? Just write Jesus. Write Jesus. That's so good. Write dude. Jesus. Uh, well, let me ask you this. Uh, I've been asking every worship leader on the podcast this year, what, what's the Holy Spirit speaking to you right now for this season? Whether it's just something personally that you're kind of hanging on to, or for something that you feel like could be for the body of Christ, man. Yeah, I've been um, I've been feasting in Hebrews and the Book of James. Wow! And actually, like me and my boys have been. It's kind of been like bedtime routine, Book of James, and um, just uh, just trusting the fact that uh, these these trials are worth it. Wow! 
you know, I don't know um, specifically what, mm. you know, what much you might be going through if you're listening to this. Um, maybe you're going through um, a really difficult time in ministry. Maybe you're, you've gone, maybe you've recently just gone through a church split. You know, mm. maybe you've, maybe you're going through a difficult time in your marriage and your parenting. You know, you've lost a lot of friends because of what you believe. And um, it's hard. You know, it's difficult. It's, it, there's pain that you deal with on a day-to-day basis. It might be the pain of regret, the pain of losing people. Mm. But I do know that the Bible instructs us to remember that consider a pure joy yeah. when we face trials of many kinds, not because we're facing the trials, not because the, the hard times are good, but, but, but it's because it's building something inside of us. Wow. God wouldn't want us to walk through this soft and cushy life mm. um, if he set in front of us difficult things to do. Yeah. You know, I've I've heard it say like this, like, you know, hard times make hard men. <laughs> and, you know, um, and so like if you like go through difficult things, it's going to build something in you that's strong. Wow. That's resilient, that that has a that has a an evidence of, of being refined. Mm. And so sometimes that that pain in that relationship the loss of that opportunity, the uh, the struggle that you're walking through, you know, maybe the isolation that you feel, is building something in you to be able to put into the world the thing that maybe you're missing. Wow! And so um, I'm just encouraged to know that like this will be worth it. It will be. So it, good. It, you can't see it right now. It's hard to reconcile it in the moment, but it will be worth it. Wow! That word resiliency has come up so many times this year. And uh, I think you're spot on with that, man. I think the trials are worth it, not because of the trials, but because who we walk through them with, man. Yeah, absolutely. Bert, you're the man, dude. Yeah, appreciate great, it, Great man. time at lunch. Great time over this uh, yeah, conversation, man. man. So absolutely. Make sure you check out Birch. We're going to put some show notes to LifePoint Music. We're going to put yeah. some uh, show notes on how you can connect with Birch. It's been a joy, man. Thanks, man. You've been listening to Worshipology with Curtis Parks. To learn more and to find resources for worship leaders and teams, you can visit curtisparks.com.